Hey guys, so a while ago I did a video about trying to decide what kind of deployment stack or what technologies to use to deploy a project. And I wanted to kind of do an updated video on that. My thoughts have changed a lot and I kind of wanted to show you a setup that I'm liking right now. So this is for a software product that uh, pretty much works very generic, um, but it covers both handling images and using sessions to authenticate and store data on a user. So to start off, I have a little diagram right here. And at the top right here, this is the front end. So I use React.js, but this is generic and it would work for any front end that you did if you wanted to use plain JavaScript, if you wanted to use Vue. Um, I don't know about Angular, I assume that would work as well. But I'm having the static files I'm just using. Now I'm not using server-side rendering for this. So just static React.js uh, or JavaScript hosted on Netlify. Love this service. It's free. They set you up with HTTPS so you're secure. And they just have a bunch of awesome services on top of it. And it's really easy to deploy to it. You can have it uh, automatic hooks on GitHub. So when I push on GitHub, it automatically pops over there. So this is my choice right now to uh, deploy the front end, the static HTML, CSS, JavaScript files that get generated. All right, so then in the back end, let's start over here. So right now I'm using DigitalOcean. Um, and reason for that is I at one point was recommending Vulture over DigitalOcean, but DigitalOcean has actually improved its prices. Um, to the point where it matches Vulture, and also DigitalOcean gives just more credits. So right now, uh, they just run promotions all the time. I have some credits on DigitalOcean, so I can actually run just a DigitalOcean box over here for $5 a month um, and put everything I want on it and be just fine. And it's enough power and CPU and all that jazz that... I uh, have no problem running everything I want on it, and it's running for free because they give you credits. Now, how I have this running is my current stack. I'm using Node.js, PostgreSQL for the database, and also Redis to store sessions, any kind of uh, temporary data. And now, because I'm basically just testing stuff out, I have everything all in one DigitalOcean box, so one $5 box, I'm storing all this. Now, right now, I'm using something called Docu um, to store all that, but you can also use something like Docker Compose, which I've used in the past to do that. But again, you can switch out any of these pieces. So instead of Node.js, you could have a Python server, you could have a Java server, Elixir, it doesn't really matter. You could still host on DigitalOcean. And then it's same for the Postgres, switch that out for MongoDB or MySQL, whatever you like. Um, and now the next part is... Cloudflare and S3. So Redis is what I'm using for sessions and authentication. The other part I talked about is images. So I am storing stuff on S3. So Amazon S3 I'm storing images. And then this is kind of an interesting bit I don't see too often when people talk about S3 is I actually put Cloudflare in front of it. So Cloudflare is really nice. They have zero dollars a month, totally free and you can cache everything. There is no limit whatsoever, at least that I'm aware of. And even to level up to the pro, it's only $20 a month, so that's quite reasonable. Um, and when you get to the point where you need this sort of thing, uh, you should be making money, at least uh, your product or your website at some point. So I have this sitting in front of S3, and this does two things. First off, it's gonna be caching all these images. So I'm making less requests to S3, so my costs with Amazon um, are less. And then also Cloudflare has servers all over the world, so it's going to be loading faster coming from Cloudflare sitting in front. So how it works is when I make a request, I request the image from Cloudflare, and Cloudflare will check if it's in the cache. If it is, it sends it right back. Otherwise, Cloudflare goes to S3 to fetch the image and then returns it. Now this piece, I'm actually, um, I'd be very happy switching over to another thing. Um, I'm happy with the current setup, but uh, I like tinkering around with things. So that's something that um, I've noticed. 
I can improve the speed at which I'm setting stuff up by using a product, for example, like Cloudinary, where they have everything set up for you. And this is another product that has a very nice free tier. You can get 300,000 images, and at the point where your, your app or your website is growing past that point, and you need to upgrade to the more expensive options, hopefully your site or your product or your, whatever you're building is making some kind of money for the amount of users that you're using that you're surpassing $89 a month, which I think is a very uh, reasonable assumption. So I, you can almost replace, you could replace this whole entire piece because Cloudinary also has its own CDN. I think it mentions right here, so high performance CDN. So you don't even have to set up, for example, Cloudflare in front of S3. So I'm managing two things right now, right? I had to set up S3 and the bucket policy is super annoying to set that up. Um, I still don't even think I have it right. And then also I had to set up Cloudflare in front of that. Whereas I could just save my development time setting up both of these pieces and just grabbing Cloudinary. So in the past, I've basically not even gone for this sort of option based on a S3 scales better. So I'd be spending less money for the amount of images, but something I never took into account is the time spent actually. So if I'm spending less time on the infrastructure, so setting up S3 and Cloudflare and doing all those things, uh, I can spend more time developing and maybe getting more customers that way. And if I'm making more money with more customers, then I can offload the cost by uh, my infrastructure being a little bit more money using something like Cloudinary, um, which is a lot easier to set up. And it has just more features out of the box. So for example, Cloudinary, I can resize images to any size that I want, which is a really nice feature and helps load time on the browser. And the same thing goes for uh, what I'm doing over here. So with DigitalOcean, um, that, and I, like I said, I like tinkering, so I started with this because I like setting up my own thing, trying it out. Um, but I think it makes a lot of sense not using DigitalOcean and using something like um, Amazon S3, or not S3, Amazon Elastic Bean. Uh, I don't know if it's a Beanstalk or I can't remember the name. Or using Heroku or using Now or any of the services, Google. Google has its own uh, cloud compute as well. Any of those services to replace this, because again, they have a lot less setup to do this. Like I'm having to manage the uh, Nginx, for example, which you wouldn't even have to touch. Um, so that's what I've been I've been valuing more is spending less time tinkering and more actually setting up um, those services where it spends less time setting up. But for now, this is my tinkering setup, and I like this setup a lot right now. Um, so some things I might replace in the future, though, is replacing some of these parts with ones that take less time to set up. So like I said, this might become Cloudinary at some point, and this might become, for example, Google Cloud Compute or whatnot uh, in the future. So that's my current stack that I'm happy with, and that's kind of my thoughts on it right now. Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious what you guys use when you're deploying a full stack project like this. Um, if you have a go-to stack or what you guys are using, I'm very curious.